I think that these are going to be incredibly good sellers. A big hello to you. I hope I find you well. Welcome back to the channel. I'm Jennifer Kirk. Welcome you up here to the Loft on Weir Yard, where post the Great Electric Train Show, we have very, very kindly been loaned by TMC the livery samples of the forthcoming G5 locomotive that they have commissioned from Bankman. This is exclusive to TMC. We do have a link in the description box to help you find them, but certainly it's one that the model railway world has been very eagerly looking forward to. And uh, I'm really, really grateful that we've been given the opportunity here as a YouTuber exclusive to prod and poke these models and get a really good close, up close and personal look at them. So come with me and I'm really looking forward to this actually because I've been waiting for these for a long, long time as well. Now I would like to stress that these are livery samples and moreover they've already done the rounds of various magazines so they have been prodded and poked and uh, they are on loan from TMC so they do have to go back. But come with me in association with Trainomatic, makers of DCT decoders and accessories that are designed by enthusiasts for enthusiasts. Find the full range available to order now at tramfabrique.co.uk. Additional support comes from Rails of Sheffield. Sell to the name you know and trust. Buy, sell or exchange any age or any gauge. Call them now for the very best price. Check them out today at the link below. So I'm really excited by this. And again, a big, big thank you to Alex over at TMC, who very, very kindly boxed up four of these livery samples and entrusted them to me to uh, get a good close look at, and more importantly, to show you guys the ins and outs. Do they live up to expectations? Well, come with me. Let's take a closer look. <laughs> For those of you who are at the Great Electric Train Show, TMC was showing off the livery samples of the G5 locomotive that they've commissioned from Backman. And this is a model that will be available exclusively from TMC. Now we've got a link in the description box down below that takes you to the appropriate page on the TMC website where you can pre-order these and they're going to be available as DCC ready and also there's going to be some sound fitted versions as well. Now the four that I've very very kindly been loaned by Alex from TMC at the end of the show represent the both versions of the Northeastern Railway Green as well as the Lime to LNER Black and the BR Early Crest Black. And this does also give us the opportunity to take a look through some of the detail differences that have been tooled up on this model. Uh, most notably the Hopper style bunker, which is really quite interesting looking at this here. And um, these are actual individual staves. So you can see through into the coal load underneath. And as you can see on these, we've also got the original style bunker there as well. The other area where there's uh, some obvious detail differences are the safety valve bonnets. And on these three versions, we've got the original style uh, brass safety valve bonnet. And then on the BR version, that bonnet is gone and we've got this different styling as well. And if we put these two side by side, you can also see that uh, it's a different boiler option with the actual uh, dome there in a different place on the boilers and that has been correctly modelled. I think all three of these other versions have the uh, uh, dome in the more forward position. And then we've also got uh, the, uh, I think this is the Westinghouse air pump on the front here. And then with the BR version, the Westinghouse air pump is removed. And uh, we've got all of the uh, buffer beam detail on this. Just looking around at this really, really nice detail and an awful lot of separately applied parts. So there's a pipe here which has been applied after all of the livery has been added. 
The livery application is really sharp on all of these models. And if you're wondering, only one of these actually is a functioning model. The others, as you can see, they're just free wheel. There's actually no motor or PCB or anything inside these. They're really just to show off what the liveries are going to look like. The Northeastern Railway Green versions have actually got both of the different identities that TMC are offering as number 2093 and this one here is uh, number 1759. Uh, the reason for this was just to make sure in all the panic of putting everything away at the end of the show that I actually got the one model that they had which does work. Now I'm led to believe it takes a Next18 decoder but I have tried this on Weir Yard and it does work so there is a decoder already in place. I have also been asked about the ability to solder uh, capacitors to the circuit board for a stay alive function and I will try and take a look and see whether that is possible. The Northeastern Railway livery really does look nice. On the camera view screen, I have to say it looks much more like a sort of London and South Western Railway green, but um, it's definitely the right shade when I look with my naked eyes. And leaning over and getting a LSWR locomotive there, you can see there is definitely a difference. So I've also got one of the Backman J72s in its earlier E1 guys, and these do appear to be exactly the same shade. So anybody who's got the uh, J72, uh, just uh, rest assured that it is exactly the same colour representation coming up, just so that there's no questions about colour representatives on the video. Uh, we are under some bright lights here. I really do like the uh, hopper style on the l &E r version and the BR version. And this actually shows it uh, both with and without the greedy boards at the top to increase coal capacity. And as you can see there, if I hold it just against the light, those are completely see-through. Uh, it's a really nice effect. And from the photographs on the TMC website, I was a little bit sceptical, but seeing it in person, it really does work well. And you can see there, without and with those greedy boards at the top. On this uh, lower style open bunker, we've got the correct pattern rear cab windows there. The glazing is flush and really nicely done. The cab itself on the side is quite open. And it's a little bit difficult just to show up the detail on the back head there, but it is really nicely done. And there's no sign of a glazing bar across the back of the cab. So that glazing is flush both front and back. The rest of the detail across the top, we've got uh, fire irons and other uh, equipment there in the uh, hooks on top of the uh, uh, tank tops. And we're just getting a wealth of separately applied detail just there in front of the Westinghouse pump. Livery application, really sharp again on this. Looking underneath the boiler, we've got the gap going all the way through. And um, there's, there's no extra detail in there that I can see particularly. Oh, actually, yeah, there is, there is some pipe work by the look of it which runs transversely, but it is quite difficult to see. It's quite dark in there, but it does look the part. Even the livery on the front of those tanks, really, really sharp. And you can see there the front buffer beam detail. We've got fully sprung buffers front and back. Looking to the underside, this is the working model. We do actually have, I can just see there, pickups from the wheels on the rear four-wheel uh, pony truck and then we've also got from the four driving wheels so it's eight wheel pickup um, it is fitted with a DCC sound fitted keeper plate we just printed on there but I don't believe that this version has sound couplings fit quite uh, neatly into NEM pockets front and back uh, this model just has the rear one fitted and this rear pony truck is hinged from back here but has a sprung loaded uh, attachment in the center which does mean that it uh, rides the track really really quite well now that step is again 
just been damaged with uh, handling. So that's, uh, again, one of the pitfalls of uh, models that go around all of the reviewers. Moving over to the other Northeastern Railway example, and I think that these are going to be incredibly good sellers. The Northeastern Railway Green is uh, a really quite pleasing shade, and we've got two different running numbers available. I believe one of these is going to be the new build that's currently underway, and the other is a period correct version. But we've got here, this, we don't have the detail applied, I suspect that the uh, fire irons and such like that are applied to the top of these will be in a detail pack for the user to fit as they wish. But the rest of the detail on this is pretty much the same. Now we do have some of the brake mechanism here. So you can see that's all factory fitted on this model. And uh, it is surprisingly robust. Although I'm just looking, I think, yes, yeah, again, don't uh, look too hard. It has been uh, broken, I think, on this. Yeah, it's missing the brake rodding down one side. That will be present on the production models. It's simply a function that this has been heavily handled by reviewers. Let's get a good close look at the LNER version. Uh, here we've got number 1752. I believe there are two different identities, at least being made available through TMC. So you've got a really great choice of models to very, very quickly populate your layout. And I particularly like the lining on the wheels of this because it's something that you can very quickly find that these have a kind of weird wobble if they're not applied correctly. But uh, that lining is absolutely true on the edges of those wheels. And uh, we've also got lining there on the steps. There's a wealth of red lining on these, and it really does make them look something special. l &E -R black can be quite a bland livery in my opinion, but the red lining really does make this model come alive. All of this detail on the back here, we've got metal handrails, metal lamp brackets, and uh, as you can see there, we've got the, uh, I'm guessing that would be air brake and vacuum brake. Again, sprung buffers, looking to the underside. This does actually have all of the pickups, even though it's not a working model. Again, across the rear bogey and the front wheels. It's got quite a weight to it, is another thing that really did strike me out of the box. So again, grip on these, I think, is going to be really quite good. It's difficult to get the balance right on an 044 chassis, especially on a tank engine, but that sprung-loaded rear pony truck really does look as though it's going to genuinely take some of the weight and just stop it from rocking on these front wheels, and that will help grip no end. No traction tyres whatsoever. Um, this really does look nice. The guard irons are metal by the feel of it, and this one does have the front coupling fitted. So you can see there just how it protrudes. I'm going to move to the BR version as uh, this is one which has the different boiler design. And certainly by BR days, uh, these were actually a fairly long lasting locomotive. And one of the options that TMC are offering is a locomotive that they actually have a photograph of it passing close by where they are at Beck Hole on what is now the North Yorkshire Moors Railway. But we've got that completely different uh, boiler and this is really nice. We've got the turned metal safety valves, the whistle behind. There are no holes in the roof there where the whistles on the other versions go which again is a nice touch. Uh, I never like it when you've got what look like bullet holes on a model for other detail versions, and that has been avoided on this. And that rear hopper, in fact, those rear straves as well are see-through too, just like on the real locomotive. And we've got the different cab back with a different shape of uh, cab windows. Again, glazing is all flush. Now, in answer to some questions that were raised on uh, an online forum, I'm going to see if I can get inside one of these locomotives. Obviously, I'll go with the one 
with the uh, uh, motor in and it's just so that we can see what are the configurations of the inside. So looking to the underneath and I don't actually have the instructions for it but I'm going to uh, make an educated guess that we've got the front screw so we're just uh, just in here we've got another screw move that across and another screw there and I'm just going to carefully very carefully take out the inside of the locomotive. So what we can see here is actually quite a, a, a spindly chassis. There's plenty of space in there and that does mean that we've got the uh, uh, gaps underneath. Plenty of room under there. So the speaker looks to be just underneath the decoder. Next 18 fitted onto the circuit board at the back here. In terms of places where we can uh, solder a capacitor in, I'm sure that uh, somebody with more knowledge of the electronics than me can get a good look at that circuit board there and decide is that something you can hardwire a stay alive to. So with the speaker there at the back, it makes a sound installation actually really, really easy. You just put in your next 18 decoder with the sound file in. The motor there is contained within that and uh, we've also got a gear tower there looks to be driving the rear wheel and then drive to the front wheels via the side rods. And you can see there some of the detail that uh, is hidden underneath the boiler uh, that you can just about see when you look into that gap. And we also get a better look there at the spring mechanism on the rear bogey. And that is actually nicely balanced. It doesn't try and lift the rear wheel of the locomotive off. Looking at the body, there's a lot of weight here and the front barrel of the boiler is completely filled with lead, held in with these two screws, which you can't actually see when the body is on. And there's actually quite a lot of room inside these. I can see there that there is space inside the water tanks so you can fit stay alive extra speakers all into there no problem whatsoever we've also got the gap through there into the cab and that corresponds with the firebox flicker which is just here at the back and it'll be interesting to see how effective that is when we've got the locomotive running the firebox flicker is pretty bright and it really does look like a fire. The colouring is perfectly done. Even under bright studio lights such as what we've got here, it's still perfectly visible and I really like the way it just lights up the back of the cab. There's no real discernible flicker but I suspect that's more to do with the decoder that this has been fitted with as the flickering is a CV function and uh, as it stands the model is presented with it permanently on. However I believe that the factory fitted versions will have that flickering as standard as it should and it shouldn't be too difficult to change the CV functions to allow the auxiliary output to flicker prototypically. The firebox flicker is on the F1 on this particular decoder, although I'm not entirely sure which brand it is. So I've just put it back together. It's actually remarkably easy. We just got those three screws and my verdict is it's a, an absolute doddle to DCC fit this. The pre-fitted speaker means that DCC sound is also really, really easy. And as you can see there, that's the speaker just hidden underneath. So there's going to be good sound propagation from that. And the additional space just inside here and also underneath the motor means that if you want to fit uh, actually quite a large stay alive, that is going to be quite an easy task to do. There is plenty of space inside this model. In fact, there's probably uh, extra space as well above the decoder too. So I don't see there being any great challenge to be able to fit anything like that or even a larger base speaker as well. When it came to running, the model performed really, really well. 
I had it on the extreme torture test track part of Weir Yard, which has been designed with all manner of steep curves, including curves on gradients, point work, and radius one curves, and the G5 actually handled all of it really, really well. I had it pulling a load of four cuff hops from the Backman stable. These were a special commission too from TMC a number of years back. And it was just at its limit on a 4% grade pulling these four wagons. And that's something actually that outperforms other models such as the Hornby M7, which has a similar wheel arrangement. So whatever Backman have done with that sprung rear pony truck, it really does work well and aids the locomotive to have maximum traction from those four driving wheels at the front. Never offered ready to run before, the G5 is certainly an amazing locomotive. Whilst we have been waiting quite some time since they were first announced, what I have seen here from these review samples, it has been well worth the wait. There are plenty of options on the tooling to provide for pretty much every single member of the class at every point in their life. The running characteristics are pretty sure-footed, and I have to say that they did outperform an awful lot of comparable models in my collection when run through the torture test track. The DCC fitting really is well thought out, and there's plenty of space inside the locomotives to cater for adding of stay alives, or even bigger bass speakers if you want to umph up the sound output. Bankman and TMC will be offering factory fitted sound versions as well as DCC ready and these are sure to be a great contender for model of the year when the production models finally hit the market. I'd like to thank TMC for loaning me these samples and allowing me a good close look and to allow me to show you guys too just to what to expect from this forthcoming G5 locomotive. It's certainly a stunner and I can see myself making a beeline to get one of these for Weir Yard as soon as the production models make it through to TMC. Well, I hope you really enjoyed today's video and found it informative as well. And again, a big, big thank you to Alex at TMC for giving me this exclusive YouTuber review of these forthcoming models. And we do have a link in the description box that takes you over to the TMC website to browse the full range of these G5s. And there are actually a lot more versions than the four that we've looked at today. So you can pick them out from anywhere from Northeastern Railway through LNA to be our early and late crest and uh, really really excited for the production models of these coming through and I'd love to hear your thoughts as well please leave a comment in the comment section down below I'd love to hear what you think about what you've seen about these models perhaps these are an item that you've uh, had on order for quite some time or maybe this is a model that you weren't aware of and now you are and perhaps it's something that you're really looking forward to please leave a comment down below and uh, I do of course read them all even if I don't have the time to answer every single one but please like share and subscribe and also check out our merch at the merch store down below for the full range of t-shirts hoodies mugs and many many things more for all things Billy's replacement speakers and of course the ever popular Gronk it up but until next time you take great care of yourself happy modeling Bye for now. Today's video comes in association with Trainomatic, makers of DCC decoders and accessories that are designed by enthusiasts for enthusiasts. Find the full range available to order now at tramfabrique.co.uk. Additional support comes from Rails of Sheffield. Sell to the name you know and trust. Family run business purchasing collections for over 50 years. From single items to lifetime collections, no collection is too small or too big. Buy, sell or exchange, any age or any gauge. Rails will take everything locos, coaches, wagons, track work, controllers, accessories. In fact, they will take absolutely everything and certainly will not cherry pick the best items. Rails are only a phone call away. Call them now for the very best price and get instant cash payment or same day transfer. Check them out today at the link below.
I'd like to send out a huge thanks to everybody who supports me on Patreon. And an extra special huge thanks goes out to Anthony Kidson, Offshore Allen, Michael Lockie, Helen Sink, Gary Lewis, David Quinn, Sparky107107, George Botterini, Chris Moss, Robert Steers, Sam Yates, Dale Williams, John N. from NC, NYM Arish, Jonathan Foster, Peter, Clifford Ison, Larry W. Grant, NI Railways 4000 Class, Ian Coulson, Alan Dickerson, Eddie Papair, Karen Nichol, Medwin Williams, Crossways Point Junction, 3B Rail, and Jennifer Horton. Thank you. Without you guys, I couldn't do this.